Hi, I'm David Schweitzer. Welcome to my little slice of the PlatformCon 2023 culture track. I'm delighted and honored to be here in such excellent company and hope that in the next 15 minutes, I'll hold my end up and give you all some insights that will be useful as you do your work of building great platforms for your developers. A little background about me. I'm a product manager, which in my world means I'm a former lots of things. I've been a computer scientist, an educator, a software engineer, an engineering manager, a bunch of other miscellaneous roles, and for about the last 15 years, truly a product manager. I've always been something of a toolsmith, and I've always been interested in empowering other people to engage productively in mental activity. So cognitive leverage is the name of the game I like to play. A little bit about my approach to this talk. So in order to give you cognitive leverage for platform planning, we need to rest on an understanding of how the platform gives developers cognitive leverage. And that in turn rests on an understanding of what they're thinking about. So I'm a big fan of Bob Moesta's jobs to be done theory. And you'll see that in the pieces of the model. Speaking of models, George Box taught us that while all models are wrong, some are useful. And this one is no exception. So please be careful, test it hard, use the things that are useful, and don't rely on anything that doesn't actually model reality. All feedback is a gift, and I'd be very grateful for yours. The easiest way to reach me is on the Platform Engineering Slack, where during PlatformCon, I'll actually be present live, but I'm easily reached there at any other time as well. For background, I came to this work because after a while being vaguely dissatisfied with the DevOps infinity loop, I took a long, hard look to see what was bothering me. I found a few headline concerns. For one, the loop's background and roots in the CICD pipeline world show through. It's focused on tools that manipulate code, not the problems that developers are using those tools to solve. And that's where we need to be if we're going to provide cognitive leverage. It often seems to index too hard on the C and CRUD, missing the reality that most modern software engineering involves incremental changes to complex existing production systems. Infrastructure as code is secondary at best, Security is a complete bolt-on, as you can see in the versions that have a thing like a virus shoved in the middle. And when I found this diamond version of the loop, I knew where I'd seen it before. It's waterfall. We're going to use some very sturdy building blocks in the model that we'll be looking at in a minute. On the one hand, there are a whole lot of generic process models around thinking and doing, such as Boyd's OODA loop, Deming's PDSA or PDCA or even Schuhart's specification, production inspection, kind of the granddaddy of, of them all. And there's also Stuart Brand's really, really amazing work on pace layers that started in the book, How Buildings Learn, recognizing the building is not a unitary thing, but a series of interconnected systems that evolve at different rates. We'll come back to that towards the very end. But keep in mind that we're thinking about process as an object. For the ultimate in simplicity, I'm just going to use a two-step process. Look at something, touch it, look at it again, touch it some more, and keep going around until you're satisfied that you're done. This intentionally elides planning because I want to focus this on the developer platform and leave out the difficult questions of how to integrate that with planning tools used by product managers and program managers. But you might keep that in the back of your head as well. The Ferris wheel, as you'll shortly see, has six components. And they can be looked at neatly across two different dimensions. One is the developer's perspective. Is the developer taking a narrow view and looking at some thing in isolation just by itself, solving its own intrinsic problems? Or is the developer taking a wider perspective, looking at the thing in some context and checking how well it interoperates? Or finally, is the developer taking an inverted perspective and looking at the context and asking if it's still OK, even with the new thing? There's also a question of what kind of concerns the developer has. And these three are single player concerns or multiplayer concerns. This will become a lot clearer in a minute. And now we come to the heart of the thing, the six parts of the Ferris wheel model. Starting with single player mode with a narrow focus is this change, whether it's to code or infrastructure, that I'm about to make right. Did I say what I meant and mean what I said? Did I write it down correctly? And will I get the effect I want? A wider perspective on that, still looking at the change, is will it work in context? When I put it out there, will it interoperate correctly with everything else that it actually needs to talk to in the actual, in the continually changing world of the systems it's connected to? 
And finally, the widest possible perspective when looking at the entire system, will I break anything else? Will this change FUBAR production completely? Then we get to exposing the thing, the change, multiplayer mode. And the first and most fundamental narrow question is, is the change somewhere where it can actually be used at all? Has it been put where it needs to be? When it's there, we take a wider perspective and ask, who is using it? And how are they using it? And is it working for them? And finally, in more or less the steady state, if production's ever steady, we ask continuously, is everything working as it should? Let's get into the details. Let's go through the first box a little slowly and carefully. In this case, a developer in single player mode with the narrowest focus needs to make a change to the production system. And the top of mind concern is, is this change right in and of itself? Just have I done the right thing here? So in order to do that, the developer needs a place to start. And that starting place is actually wide and deep. Your platform, and these lists are by no means exhaustive, but they give you a starting point at least. Your platform needs to support good development environments where the developer can pull in everything that they need to touch in order to make the change. You need to have good developer tooling and really think about the wider developer experience. And you even need to go as far as onboarding because helping a new developer ramp up quickly can save your company a huge amount of opportunity cost in being able to bring changes to market much faster. At the same time here, when the developer is, is looking at these changes, um, the, the view is very fine-grained. You could even think of a syntax highlighting IDE as doing testing and examination of each character it's typed for syntactic correctness, a very, very local concern. But your platform needs to do more than that, of course. You'll need this is an area where the developer needs to be supported with static analysis tools and with an infrastructure for writing and using good unit tests. With that kind of stuff in place, the developer will be able to be confident that the change is of itself correct. And now, of course, if from a security perspective, this is a really vulnerable point because the last thing you want is to allow unsanctioned changes into your systems. The kinds of security concerns that are relevant to a platform here are things like network security to make sure that only the right people even have access to the systems in the first place and to take care of or work with your security comp compatriots on things like preventing social engineering so the developers aren't tricked into letting people do bad things. Once the developer is convinced that the change is right of itself, their concerns widen to asking if it'll work in, in the real context. There's a good chance that that development environment is not exactly the same as production, for example. In this case, the developer needs to touch not so much the content of the system, but a bunch of configuration to pull the right pieces together in order to make sure they interoperate correctly. Your tooling here needs to support source code management. This is the stage of the process where a developer will be doing pull requests, for example. Having good base images so that people can reference the right sets of, of components is helpful. And if you have ephemeral test environments, well, that's all for the better. Um, well, the examination here is compound. It's a bigger view. It's not just does this thing work, is it syntactically correct, but how well does it work with others? You'll need support for integration testing and dynamic code analysis. It's a good idea to know as early as possible if the code is not performant. If things fail here, by the way, and this is why I mentioned pace layers, there's two possibilities. It might be that it's an adjustment of some configuration that it's within this one little loop between uh, the stage, between touching and looking. Or it might require going back to a narrower concern and then coming back here again later when it's been fixed. Since this is integration, a lot of stuff is not going to have been written in-house. And this is where you want to worry about things like your component supply chain and license governance to make sure that only the right things from the outside world are being brought into your system. And on the infrastructure side, you'll probably want to know what the costs of your cloud provider are and have some control over which tools you prefer to use. With conviction that the change is good and works well with, plays well with others, the developer ne needs to take that inverted view. Is this going to break anything else? At this point, 
it's really about getting ready to switch to multiplayer mode and the kinds of things that are touched are more controls. Your platform needs to support a build system and ideally container management so that the stuff that's been put together in this assembly can be controlled. The tests here are end-to-end -end functional regression tests and performance regression tests. If you can catch stuff before it goes out at all, you're in great shape. I want to point out, by the way, that if you're doing, if you're skipping all those environments between dev and prod, that's fine. This is still a concern. And the question the developer is asking in this point is, is production failing for the places where my new ch my change is running? It doesn't matter where you're doing this. These are the questions you need to be asking and your, your platform needs to support asking. them. On a security side here, you need to be sure that your CI CD pipelines are secure so that no one can, ins can insert malicious stuff into a build. And you wanna be thinking a lot about secrets management because now you're gonna have to be handing over the keys to the production kingdom to this system as it slides out into multiplayer mode. I want to pause briefly at the transition from single player mode to multiplayer mode and emphasize the qualitative difference. Single player mode is about managing changes to the system, and the focus is essentially on the I. In multiplayer mode, it could be a small exposure or it could be exposed to every interconnected device on the planet. That's just a quantitative degree. But what matters is that this entire multiplayer mode is about managing who the change is exposed to and how wide, not about making the change itself and being confident in its correctness. Multiplayer mode starts with the narrowest possible understanding of exposure. Is it possible to expose it at all? This is the deployment problem. It requires that your platform support CI CD pipelines, maybe edge caching for performance. You need to be able to manage provisioning of infrastructure in case the change requires new kinds of systems or new, new capacity. The question here that you're looking at is what's the status of the fleet? What's deployed where? What is in place and where is it in place? Your security, well, developer authorization and authentication is vitally important here so that you know who's putting stuff out to production. And you're going to be spending a lot of time with compliance about change management and making sure that your platform has the right kind of controls over who signs off on which changes. With changes landed where they need to be, you can actually start dialing up the exposure. Now, it doesn't matter how you do this, whether you do this in small increments or just as a blue-green fl switch flip. The point is, what's changing here is who's using it. And you need a lot of controls for that, feature flags, release controls. It's where you need to be able to roll, roll things back and stop a change that's going wrong. How do you know if it's going wrong? That's the looking side, which is all about differential monitoring, whether it's comparing today's code to yesterday's code or the A condition to the B condition. Um, you need to know, you need to be able to compare different serving paths to understand how the change is performing. What kind of security is needed here? Well, it's all about the access control. You need to know who your end users are so that you can control whether or not they have access to certain features. Or if it's just an experiment, you at least need to know how to manage the cookies and an experimentation framework, all part of the platform. Finally, the widest possible multiplayer concern. With the change fully deployed, is everything working? At this point though, there's still exogenous factors like demand that might require that you scale the system or auto scale it. You may need failover if some cell or region fails in your cloud provider. You need to be watching everything from a big eye in the sky. This is all about supporting observability in your platform. You need SLOs and anomaly detection so that you know when the SLOs are breached. And this all needs to be backed with a strong incident management system so that when things do go wrong, and sadly they will, you can respond. Security here is entirely defensive. You have to have the walls up against the, the hackers and DOS, DDoSers and keep an eye on all of the vulnerabilities that are being, aware, being discovered so that the next time that Log4j has a bug, you can deal with it promptly. Let's bring it home. I've mentioned a couple of times that as you go through the look-touch cycle in each of these six zones, sometimes you keep on adjusting in that zone. Sometimes you have to go back to a previous zone, sometimes all the way back to that single player narrow view. And the right way to think about that is Stuart Brand's pace layers. 
but the picture is just horrible and it's not very intuitive in this case. So I chose the Ferris wheel, which comes up next. So here's the Ferris wheel. Six touch and look loops arranged three in single player mode, three in multiplayer mode. And if you take only one thing away from this talk, please notice that each of these six zones is itself a loop. It's not one big go round the Ferris wheel, but it's go from point to point, shifting attention and focus to different kinds of concerns. And in each case, touching and testing until it's right, going backwards and forwards as necessary until you can get all the way around the loop. Finally, plan to deliver value incrementally. Think of things as being like covering a slice of bread with a piece of Swiss cheese. It may be thicker in some places and thinner in others. It may even have holes. By the same token, your platform might provide full automation for some features and a link to documentation at AWS or Google or Azure for others. It doesn't matter as long as you know where the holes are, where the cheese is thick, and what you're going to work on next to provide maximum ROI by providing as much cognitive leverage for the investment you make as you possibly can. Thanks so much for coming. Please let me know whether and how this is useful for you and how it can be improved, and enjoy the rest of PlatformCon 2023.